So, Tuan, I think this week we saw a little bit of a, a preview of what could be to come here when it comes to the rising U.S. China trade tensions. Markets, though, it seems to be taking it in stride for now. But what's going to be the next driver for markets in the next couple of weeks or so in June after we saw a pretty decent last two months? Exactly. So I think um, now, given that we have seen quite a strong rally uh, from the lows uh, in March and now that a lot of countries uh, in Europe, but now starting in the U.S., um, with the exit strategies, now markets are turning a little bit more to other themes now. And of course, as you rightly said, uh, China-U.S. tension uh, would be one of uh, these. But we think this is more of uh, election rhetoric here. Uh, as you know, we are, of course, now in the middle of the election campaign uh, with the election uh, in uh, beginning of uh, November. And as uh, the approval rating of President Trump has uh, fallen quite sharply, he has, of course, now uh, also to distract his uh, uh, voters here. And um, now directing to China is maybe one of the possibilities. And, of course, as I mentioned, uh, with the exit strategies, we also have to watch now how this is uh, going to play out. If there is a second wave, which could trigger potentially also a second lockdown, uh, I think these are the main uh, themes uh, we are looking at. And then, of course, uh, how the economic data uh, will also then follow. We know uh, yeah. and we have seen Q1 data, which was bad, but uh, of course, everyone should be aware that Q2 uh, in Europe and uh, also in the U.S. will be even worse than Q1. Yeah, and yet you see this divergence, right, of what the real economy is seeing versus what fi financial markets ha have outperformed, essentially. How do you think this all gets resolved? Will stocks eventually catch down and, and get a dose of reality? Or do you think that the economy, are we going to see a, a decent enough bounce back to justify the hope that's been priced into markets? Yeah, so I think what the market are currently pricing in is, is exactly that story, uh, that the economies are open again, uh, we don't see a second wave, and that things are slowly returning back to some sort of normality. Maybe you can call it a new uh, normal. But um, if uh, we compare then, of course, the reality, as you rightly said, um, with the expectation uh, as I mentioned, there is, a, uh, of course, also a lot of uh, price in. So when I look at our 12-month target, for example, for the S&P 500, uh, we think there is not much upside potential, uh, and uh, the risk uh, at this level is rather to the downside from our perspective. Tuan, there's been a lack of uh, stimulus from China, 4.8% of GDP versus the likes of the U.S. at 15%, Japan at 20%. How much of a risk is that for EMs? We don't think it's, it's much of a risk because um, when you look at the data and uh, the way how China and also other Asian um, countries have uh, deal with uh, the virus, I think... Uh, there is not a need to be uh, so uh, aggressive in terms of uh, stimulus here. Um, the markets were maybe a little bit uh, disappointed uh, with uh, the number of the stimulus measures also uh, compared to uh, developed markets. But uh, the lockdown in China, as we know, has been severe for two months, so in January and, and uh, February. But uh, since then, the economy is open again. We are seeing, of course, uh, the, the data are recovering, not as um, uh, back to the previous uh, level, but of course, uh, China and the rest of Asia are at least two months ahead of uh, the rest of the world. So hence, there is not that kind of uh, need uh, for such a big stimulus. But I think we also heard, if need be, then uh, the, the government here will then also increase the stimulus. So um, from that perspective, we are not uh, worried at all. Tuan, I want to take a look at the bond market. Southeast Asian bonds in particular have had a, a great time, best performing in Asia in Q1. Are you still finding Indonesian, uh, Thai, Filipino bonds attractive at current levels? On a selective basis, yes, 
broader markets, um, as you rightly said, the performance has been great already. Um, so we are still uh, recommending clients uh, for carry, but uh, it has to be much more selective, especially now after the run we have seen. So it's not just uh, by the whole market, um, like um, let's say at uh, September, but now it's more on a selective basis. And Tuan, just tell us in terms of conviction calls right now, what are you seeing the most opportunity? It seems like we're seeing in the last couple of weeks or so this rotation out of out of quality into value. And and it, and people are pricing in, as you mentioned, this this recovery. But then you're flagging, of course, the risks of all of a second wave as well. So how do you hedge your bets at this moment? Yeah, you rightly said. So um, we have been recommending, we call it quality growth here because I think in such an environment uh, where most of the companies are not able to provide guidance, it's even more important to look at those companies uh, with a strong balance sheet, with also a visible um, business model. And that's why we have identified especially the technology, but also the healthcare sector to be uh, both in this quality growth uh, area. Uh, as you already said, we are also seeing it, uh, in the last one or two weeks, I would say, some rotation into a value, but we think this is maybe not sustainable. Uh, we still think uh, the winners in the past supposed to be the winners uh, in the future as well. Uh, but of course, they have also reached now um, valuation levels which are not cheap anymore. So hence here, you also, again, have to be selective. Uh, if our view of a continuous recovering uh, would not play out, then of course as a hedge we still like gold on the other side. Um, I think here uh, with interest rate being still very low, we don't really see much inflation. I think uh, gold deserves um, to have a meaningful allocation in uh, all clients' portfolios. We've seen it, at least when it comes to global GDP estimates, that things perhaps have bounced or at least bottomed for 2021. Do you think that's still looking a bit optimistic? Because that seems to be the reason or a catalyst for many bulls to really continue to tra chase this rally. Yeah, so our view is, and I think, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, this year uh, GDP uh, will drop quite massively. And as I said, uh, Q2 will be the worst. Uh, quarter since the second uh, world war uh, we are expecting economies in the u.s to recover back to uh, end of 2019 level in 2022 um, so uh, the bounce back mm. will happen in 21 but it won't be enough uh, to be back at the level uh, from last year so it will take another year in 22 uh, in order to be back uh, then uh, to levels of 19 in Europe, depending also on countries, uh, it might take slightly longer maybe than uh, Q2 uh, 23. Um, and uh, the same would be for earnings. Uh, and this is, I think, what the markets are also sure. looking for and uh, starting now also to uh, discount this. 